description. So, hooray. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, special thanks to Noah uh, for putting together this XRP demo. I know that we have uh, five rookies currently in the state, which is pretty exciting. We have at least one team that's planning on joining us today, uh, potentially two teams, but I know we had some last minute, um, you know, people that couldn't necessarily make it. So uh, really, I'm just here to facilitate this for Noah um, because he is your expert on everything programming. Um, Noah, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll introduce Emma just so that you can know who our first senior mentor is and then the teams can introduce themselves. So let's go from there. So Noah, take it away and explain what the student board of directors is. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Noah Ryan. Um, my I'm on FRC team 2202. It's my third year on the team and I'm one of the co-captains. I've been in first itself for around seven years now through FLO, FTC and FRC. And I'm also on the first student board of directors. For the student board specifically, the goal is to spread first throughout the community and ensure there's like there's effective access for everybody all around the state of Wisconsin and to really promote first overall. And so my project with the XRP is to kind of try and increase the availability of all the different skills required to be com a competitive first team. And in this case, it's related to software. And all I'm right, Emma. Emma. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm Emma. I'm one of the first senior mentors in Wisconsin. So my job is just to be extra support for all of you, um, help answer questions and guide you in the direction of the experts like Noah who can help answer those questions. Okay, sounds good. Um, in that case, as long as I assume you guys all have your kits with you, I'm going to get started. Um, can you guys all hear me fine? I just want to make sure before. Do you want, we can ask them to uh, unmute yep. and introduce themselves. Is that oh, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, for sure. If the teams want to unmute and introduce themselves super quick. You guys hear us? Yep. Hi, my name is Aurora. I'm like, we want to say like uh, 15 sophomore ever. Okay. Uh, was it nine, 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 five, seven, eight? Nine, five, seven, eight. Five, five, seven, eight. Five, five, seven, eight. What, what team do you guys pick? What's the name? Uh, player, player one. one. He's so cool, they did. Finn Giovanna. I'm also a sophomore. Freshman. Rebels. Speaking of. <laughs> Great. Nice to meet you guys. Do we have any other introductions that we wanted to go through? I know there's a Christopher Bennett on the call. I don't know if that's actually just also associated with um, team uh, ready player one or just player one. Sorry. Awesome. All right. Chris is from the Marshfield first team. Fantastic. All right. Sounds good. Um, In that case, am I? Good to get started. Wonderful. Yeah, I just want to mention player one. I think that's a great name. Our team name isn't as uh, as creative. We're just Beast Robotics, Brickfield East and Central. So that's how our team name came about. But um, either way, so this is just going to be the XRP robot demonstration. In that case, we're going to get started. So first is just kind of the objective and kind of laying out what's going to happen today. First, I'm going to introduce kind of everything about the XRP bot, what it's all about, and that should take around five minutes. And then after that, we'll go on to building the robot and actually building out all the parts. That will take around 60 minutes. And then after that, we'll install WPI and Lib and try to get all the software actually integrated onto the robot which hopefully takes around 15 minutes. And then after that, I'll finally go on to the next steps that you guys can take with the XRP bot, which hopefully takes around five to 10 minutes. And then there's also a QA and a if you guys have any questions. Also, if you have any questions while we're going through this, feel free to just shout them out. I won't be insulted at all. Please ask questions. I'd love it if you guys just shouted out questions as we went. And then if we have extra time, it's not on the agenda, but I'd 
can also run through some of the code that's within an XRP template and also some stuff that I added, depending on how time permits. And with that being said, we can head right into the introduction. So to start, what is XRP? So XRP stands for Experiential Robotics Platform, and that's essentially exactly what we're going to be using it for as an experimental robotics platform where we are using it to experiment and play around to try and get more integrated within the FRC way of programming and coding. In terms of contributors for this project, you have Spark Electronics, WPI Lib, and Raspberry Pi. Here's a full list of the contributors right in that picture. And then also it's a mini, the XRP itself, here's an image of it, is a mini FRC robot. It's kind of a much simpler version, obviously, and we're going to see how that's helpful on the next slide here. So why we use the XRP bot and why we're going to use it this year is essentially the XRP bot is supposed to be an introduction to FRC software and specifically WPI Lib and that's a library that's primarily used in coding for FRC. And as you saw on the previous slide, WPI Lib was literally, literally one of the developers of the XRP bot. And so because of this, they make they made sure to put in a lot of the same and similar tools, essentially, to the point where it's going to be very effective for us to be able to learn this and then transition on to the FRC coding itself as the season gets underway. Another really nice thing about this is you can literally run this straight off your computer like on your table, you can run the robot. You don't need a joystick or anything. Although if you want to practice with it, you can, of course, but it's very convenient, which is very nice. And as you can see here, here's a comparison. Um, I'll let you guess which one is a simpler robot. So as you can clearly see, the XRP robot is so much simpler than the actual FRC robot, but it serves many of the same functions. So it allows us to build a really strong foundation. And if we don't build the foundation, something like this happens where the water, yes, it's going to the pipe. The code may work, but it's very leaky. So when we have some very simplistic code, just one step, maybe it'll work. But as we get deeper into the weeds of the FRC season, that's when we're going to really want a strong foundation for the code. And that's really what the XRP bot is for, to help us build that foundation. With that being said, and now we're going to go over parts of the robot. And I'd like to think the software related parts is like the Packers. It's a lot more interesting and relevant. And when we get to the hardware, it's more like the Bears, which unfortunately isn't as relevant. And I can insult the Bears because I'm a Bears fan, which is a bit unfortunate right now. But either way, onto the different parts of the robot. For software related, first we have the drive motors, which have integrated wheel encoders within them, which is really nice and similar to FRC. We also have a rangefinder sensor or a distance sensor if you prefer that. This measures between 20 and 4,000 millimeters. And finally is the line following sensor, which it just helps us practice follow lines and also just start to get used to more and more different kinds of sensors um, on, within robotics. Next, here are some more. The One of the most important parts is going to be the IMU or inertial measuring unit. This is also couples as the Raspberry Pi, which is essentially the brain of the robot. This is where a bunch of our user inputs come from, and this is also where we plug in all of our ports. It's really important the IMU part of it measures things like head and store angle, acceleration, speed, and all that good stuff, which is really important for us as well. Um, it's kind of similar to the Robo Rio on an actual FRC robot, but it will really help us to be able to get a lot of the information that we have on an ex actual FRC bot. And also there's a servo, which just controls the arm, which I think is relatively um, similar to any other servo, just on a much smaller scale. And here are the non-software related. Quick, oh, we yeah. have a couple. We have a couple more people who joined. All right, sounds good. Um. Yeah, for everyone else that just joined, if you guys just wanted to introduce yourself super quick, I haven't gone into any of the like actual substantive stuff with the robot yet. It's mainly been an introduction. So if you guys want to introduce yourself. Hi, this is Mark Bowie. I'm the lead mentor from um, Team 9676 here in uh in uh, Marshfield. And I also have Fontana here, who's our newest member. And I'll get the camera on as soon as I figure out how to do it. Yep, no problem. Nice to meet you. Um, and did we have anybody else to introduce themselves really quick? Um, uh, my name's Owen. What? Oh. Keep going, you're doing great. 
Oh, okay. Uh, my name's Owen. I'm also from Marshfield. Great. Nice to meet you as well, Owen. And uh, I'm Steven. I am also from Marshfield. Excellent. And then Eric B. Is not currently unmuting, so feel free to put your information in the chat. All right. All right. Oh, Sounds cool. Good. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um. Yeah. So previously, I've just gone over some slides, kind of introducing the XRP robot. Um, just why we use it, what it is. The quick rundown essentially is it helps us to build a good foundation because it's very similar to the WPI lib. That's just a really quick rundown. And I think it's actually important to go over the parts so I can run through these super quick. We have the drive motors, which have integrated wheel encoders, the range finder, which is really just a distance sensor that measures between 20 and 4,000 millimeters. It's ultrasonic and the line following sensor. And then we have this, which is the Raspberry Pi and inertial measuring unit. Um, it measures things like headings, angle, acceleration, speed, all that good stuff. And then the servo, which is any like any other servo, just on a smaller scale. So that's just a super quick rundown of that stuff. And now those parts of the robot rather. Now moving on to other parts of the robot that are non-software related. Just going to run through these super quick. We have the regular wheels, the tires, so to speak, and support wheels, so to speak, here. We also have the battery holder. The robot base, arm, battery cover, and a couple sensor holders. They're not all shown in that image there. All right, so that, with that being said, that just about wraps up the introduction. So now we're going to actually get into building the robot. Um, I think I know one of you guys emailed about that. I, it's my, it's, my apologies, I didn't see it till around 10 minutes ago um, or right before this meeting, but we will be building the robot here. So yeah, with that being said, the way that I've kind of formatted this is I'll just introduce it on this slide. I'm going to have the step that it's actually doing. This one is a lot simpler since it's the first step, kind of an introduction. The materials that are going to be needed along with a picture screenshot at the bottom of the screen. Um, the pictures will get smaller if there's longer materials or notes here. And then kind of just a note about some important things that you might want to keep in mind while doing this. And then I also have a video on the side to demonstrate myself doing it. Um, I'm not the most talented person in terms of hardware, which is why I recorded these videos and did this beforehand. And I also realized that when recording these videos, I was going really, really fast, but don't worry about that. I watched over the videos and I have places where I'm going to pause to give you guys time to make sure you can build the robot. Um, so yeah, with that being said, does everybody have their kits with them and are good to go? Nice, I see player one, you guys are good. and. Is the other Marshfield team? I'm not sure if everyone would have the robot. Or oh yeah, if the robot or would be. They in... just have someone. Right. With it. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you guys just have someone on the team that has the robot. Um. All right. All right. Thank you, Chris. That sounds good. All right. With that being said, I'm just going to play this video. Actually, first, if we just want to take out all the different parts of the robot and just kind of lay it out on the table like I have it in this video, um, that that would be ideal. And also, as we're going through this, since I know we have multiple teams, as you guys finish with each step um, or each video, please just let me know so that I can um, move on. And one other thing, if you would like to follow along with the slideshow itself, since I know it might be a little bit hard um, to kind of to get to go off the video once, it should be on everybody can view. So if I can paste the link, there's a tiny URL thing. Let me just find it. If I can paste that in the chat, I think that would also be easier. So let me just sorry, get this. And then so if I go here, that xrp-demo um if you guys copy and paste that tiny url link that should also get you to the slideshow presentation so you can watch the videos again or if you have any questions it's tinyurl.com slash xrp-demo-wi so yeah those are just a couple quick notes with that being said please either just unmute and let me know when you guys finish each step or you can let me know in the chat any of those will work so yeah 
here's going to be the video. I'm just going to play it once again. This first step is really straightforward. It's just kind of an introduction. In one other thing, can you guys hear the audio of the video or? No, you can't. OK, that's all good. I can just explain as we go then. Um, so the first part we're going to be needing is the spark, the Raspberry Pi or in inertial measuring unit right here. Is what it looks like. And it might be hard to see in the video, but there's going to be tape on the ports. Um, the primary on the ports. So all this first step is doing is essentially taking that tape off. It's there to protect the ports, make sure they're all operating cleanly. However, now that we're actually building the robot, of course, we don't need that. Yeah, the first step is just going to be taking the tape off. Tape off of the um, tape off of the IMU. Um, I know some of them have four pieces, some have eight pieces on. Just let me know when you guys are done with that and we can continue to go. I think I also mentioned this earlier. I'm not sure if everybody was on the meeting. If you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me and just ask away. We'll also have a period at the end where you can ask any questions, but yeah. Um, yeah, so you can see here for the note, probably on the four motor ports and potentially the range line to WIIC and extra ports on um, the tape there. It's, all right, are you guys good to go on to the next step? All right, thank you, player one. You guys are all good. And is the other Marshfield team? Um, can I get some of kind of signal that you guys are good as well? All right, great, thank you. All right, so next moving on. Oh, I need to go through here. Moving on to the second, this is going to be putting the actual IMU onto the frame. Once again, pretty simple to start. So we're just gonna grab the major frame and the IMU. And in order to put this on, I'll show you with, with the video. Um, what we're gonna wanna do for this, is make sure you have the bot facing this orientation. That's going to make it much easier. So you're going to want the side that's not fully filled in that has the two places for the um, white balls facing away from you. So make sure the board frame is in that orientation. And then once it is, you're also going to want to ensure. Oh, sorry about that. You're also going to want to make sure. Oh, somehow I went back a slide. Sorry. There we go. Um. What you're going to want to make sure is that the four black ports that read line extra QWIIC and range that they are also facing away from you and you're going to push that side in first. So if I play the video here. Um, yeah, you're going to want to push that side in first. And then after that, you're just going to want to push down on the other side to snap it into place as you can see in the video. Um, don't worry if it's misaligned, if it looks misaligned, like if one side is higher than the other, that's how it's supposed to be. That's just how it was built. So yeah, um, here you can see the note pushing the side with the notch there on the frame away from me in the video. Push that side in first and then push down on the near side and just snap that into place. And make sure I can play the video again for you guys as well. Um, you're going to want to make sure the four ports are facing away from you. So here you can see it's just you're going to have the four black ports there facing away from you. You're going to push that side in first against the notch and then push down on the near side. It might take a bit to push it down. This one is not too easy to put in.
And then just once again, give me an indication whenever you guys are good. All right, thank you, player one. Looks good. And then for the other Marshfield team, same thing. Let me know when you guys are good. Can you show the video one more time? We were trying to get our audio hooked up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No problem. So I'm just going to play it back a bit. Um, you're going to want to have the frame in this orientation where you have the two like circles with the balls facing away from you. And then you're going to want to make sure the four um, black ports, that is the line extra Q, W, I, I, C, and range sensors facing away from you. I was just reading off my own XRP that I have here. You're going to want to make sure that's facing away from you. And then you're going to push that side towards the notch in first. Make sure that's in snugly. And then you're going to push down hard on the near side. It might take a little bit to get it in. Um, to snap it in, but it should snap in. And if it looks a bit uneven, that's all good as well. There's no problem with that. That's just how it was how it was built. OK, we got it. All right, sounds good. Next, the third step is going to be the battery pack onto the frame. So for this, you're going to want the frame that we just built and the battery pack. Um, so if you guys just want to take out the battery pack and make sure you have it. That's going to be the picture on the bottom right there. Um, and now I will play the video and pause as we go. All right, so yeah. So if you guys want, make sure you can locate that hole right there after you flip the robot onto the back. Um, I can play this back again here after you flip it. So make sure you guys know where that hole is because that's where the wire for the battery pack is going to be going into. Give you guys a few seconds to locate that. And then we'll keep it coming. All right, so now you're going to want, if you see right here, the place where the wires are coming out on the battery pack is going to be on the far side away from you. So as you can see in the video here, it's going to be on the far side facing away from you. And that's going to be on the far side. And now you can start to put the wire into that place that we identified earlier on um, the little hole. So if you guys can get that in there and then just kind of pull it through, pull it through there. And now you can see the orientation that it's in with that far side. And the battery pack, I would recommend placing in the front first and then placing in the back. This one is a little bit loose, which is fine since we have the uh, we have the cover for the batteries after this. So it might be a bit loose at first. That's completely normal. That's why we have the battery cover later on. So. Yeah, if you guys got that in, once again, just give me an indication or if you want me to redo anything, go for it. Thank you, player one. Good job, guys. Yeah, we're good. All right, wonderful. Next is just going to be putting in the double AA battery, your four AA batteries. Um, so if you guys have those batteries with you, you can take them out. If you don't, it's fine. Um. It's just that we can finish building everything. You can see how to connect everything. We just won't be able to hook it up to the computer, but you can still get all the software onto your computer. So it's just a matter of one or two steps to install the WPI lib and connect it to the robot to your computer, which there will be a replay of this video as well. So if you don't have the double A batteries, don't worry about it at all. But otherwise, I mean, I can play the video, but it's just placing the batteries in the plus minus is all on the battery pack. So. Yeah, we have to we have to uh regular key running for the other kind of I'll take out the you don't Yeah. Hey Noah, real quick question. Yeah, go for it. Are all of the individual videos that you've embedded in this link? 
are they something that we could put together in like a playlist on YouTube? Yeah, for sure. I have them in a Google Drive, all in a Google Drive folder right now. Okay. Um, I can send that to you after the meeting as well, and or I can see if I can figure out how to upload it as well. We can talk about that okay. after. For Sounds sure. good. I'd say we should probably talk to the education committee um, who might have some better ideas on how to structure it, but okay. this is really great. And I like that you have like the embedded videos. That's part of it. So that's really cool. Yeah, for sure. All right. So um, let me know when you, whenever you guys are good with the batteries. Once again, if you don't have them, no problem. Just let me know that you guys are good and we can move on. We got them. All right, wonderful. Player one, are you guys or take your time just whenever you guys are done, let me know. It's a good learning experience for sure, I think as well. Um, yeah, no, take your time. Yeah, you guys are all good. Oh, are you guys good? Make sure you got all four. Good to go. All right, wonderful. In that case, we can move on to the next step. So now this is where we're actually going to get wire or power rather, sorry, to the robot. So it's going to be a little power checkpoint. This one is relatively simple. It's just going to be plugging the, um, the wire into the XRP bot. It's just the frame that we've already built, nothing new needed. So without further ado, I'm just going to play the video. So first, just flip the robot back over. And then we're going to take the wire with us and then just plug it into that port right there. If you guys can find it, it's right to the left of the green. So we're just going to plug that in there. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to flip it over and then plug it in there. And then, um, so on the slideshow, um, you can see I've circled in the bottom picture the with neon green. That's the on off switch that we're going to be using to test next. So I know it's kind of hard to find on this, but it's right next to that power cord that we just plug in to the left. So if you're able to, it shouldn't look just like this. Flip that on and you should have a red light that stays static with a green light flashing. So you can see here, once we flip that on, you should have the red light and the green, green, sorry, blinking light. If you guys can confirm once you have the light with the green blinking light flashing, then we'll move on. And if you guys don't feel free to ask any questions and see. Player one, nice, good. Sounds good. And we'll We're good. On. All right, great, thank you. All right, in that case, I don't let's keep playing the video again. That's a bit strange, but either way, next, this is going to take a bit. We need to build out our kind of motor controller or motor driver with the wheel. So you can see you're gonna need quite a few materials. We're gonna need the drive motors, which for some reason aren't in here. That's my apologies, but it's gonna be the red ones. Um, the, it's pretty distinct. It's the red things with the little white top coming out. So those are the, going to be the drive motors that we need. You're going to need the wheels, which is the furthest to the right in the picture. Um, the wires, specifically, you're going to want these discolored wires where you have one thick white end and one thin white end. Otherwise, it's kind of like a rainbow of white colors in the middle. And then you're going to need the quote unquote tires, which is really just what goes on the outside of the wheel. Um, you're not going to need the two white balls. That's just in the picture, but we won't need that yet. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to gather up all of those materials. I think you might need to open a bag or two. So yeah, make sure. Sorry, once again, I'm not sure. I thought I had the um, motor driver picture, but it must not have been. If you look in the video, it's on the far right. It's just those red things. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to play the video now. Um, the first 25 seconds is actually just going to be assembling, getting the parts. So I'll just skip here.
So what you're going to want is the wheel in one of the motor drivers. And you can see the white part that connects to the wheel. If you look at the wheel, there's a place that will go right in. You're going to need to make sure it's aligned. It's kind of aligned weird in a diagonal fashion, but you should be able to just snap that into place on. So if we want to snap both wheels into place, just like that. Yeah, sorry, my hand kind of got out of the camera there, but there you go. So yeah, if you guys can line up the wheel with the motor driver on that little white tip right there and snap it into place. Give you guys a few seconds to do that with both wheels. And then after that, we're going to put on the tire, so to speak, which for this one, we're just going to need to wrap it around the wheel. So you're just going to want to, so you're going to want to secure on one side where it's in the wheel, and then you can kind of just wrap it around, squeeze it in all around the wheel. Yeah, it might take a sec for you to do it, but you have to stretch it around. But once you get it, it's pretty secure, just like that. So we're going to do that on both, um, both wheels as well. Right, so do it like so. And now, once again, give you guys a few seconds to get that done. All right. Um, and now we'll keep moving on to the next part, which is going to be the wires. If you can, just kind of test the wheel, make sure it spins. Um, this should work, but just to make sure 100%, because these are going to be really important, just kind of grab each wheel and spin it from side to side and make sure it's all good. Yeah, for the wires, you're just going to take the thicker end and put it in straight to the motor, just like that. And yeah, you're going to do that for both wheels. Um, I just do the same thing for the other wheel. So yeah, and let me know if you guys have any questions on that. If you each want to take, you're going to take the thicker end of the white wire and put it in. You might need to try each side and make sure it's secure as well, because that's really important. And let me know when you guys are done with both or all of those steps and we'll keep on moving. Awesome. Noah, can I ask you questions about like what you learned while going through this? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So, OK, question then. Um, so as you started putting this together, obviously you have quite a bit of experience related to programming, programming in first slash FRC. Um, when you were working with the system, what were some of the uh, case like situations where you could see a veteran team using something like this to test run, you know, if like they didn't have a, another robot available? Yeah, for sure. So I think one of the best use cases would be to like work with rookies on it since um, when I was looking at the software and I also added some of my own software to it, I think it's just like it's so similar to the actual WPI library with actual FRC programming, which I think probably because it's made by WPI and lib itself as a way to help people get integrated with it. So I think the main thing is really getting people kind of associated with the FRC programming in general. And it's just like really good practice because I'm sorry, I'm just looking to the robot to the side off to the side of my screen. Once it's completed, you can have like the servo, which you have on a natural robot, obviously on a much larger scale. You're going to have your sensors, have your wheels, have your drivetrain. And this is kind of like a chassis as well. So I think it's just like a really condensed version of the actual FRC robot that's much simpler. So I think it would be super helpful both as a refresher and also for um, newer rookies and such to get acclimated and really get into the FRC coding before the season starts. Awesome, that's great news. Um, so yeah, just once again, let me know when you guys are good to keep going and yeah, feel free to ask any more questions as well. Um, all right, are both teams good to go? All right, thank yeah. you, player one. All right, wonderful. In that case, we will keep going. So next is going to be putting the wheels on the frame. So what we're gonna do is you're going to need your frame that you've built out and make sure it's flipped onto the back in the same orientation as it was before with kind of the wheel, so to speak, facing away from you where the full chassis is facing towards you. And you're going to need your built drive motors. And then 
we will just play the video here. So, oh yeah, for this, you're also going to want the two miniature white balls that I had in the other picture. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. That looked like this in the bottom left. You're going to want to grab those two miniature white balls as well for this. So the white balls you're going to grab and just put them in, just press them into each side of the um, XRP bot where they are right there. Should be pretty good there and make sure it's stable there. I can also kind of show this on the camera here, right here. And next is going to be the drive motor. So these, we're going to want to make sure we're putting them in, in the correct spot. It can be a little bit tricky, so really make sure we're paying attention right here. The first step is knowing where the wires go. So the wires are going to go right in between, like right in that hole between the it, robot. So right there is going to be where you want to sneak the wires through. So I would just grab one of the drive motors, locate where that is, and put the wire through. And keep in mind the orientation of the drive motor as I'm putting it through. The wire is right next to that gap that I'm putting it into. So I'll give you guys a few seconds for that super quick. Kind of identify that and put the wire through. And now we're going to push the, I don't know if you want to call it the front of the robot, let's say, but push the side near the wire in first. Make sure this is aligned properly. You might need to move it around a bit to make sure it fits. So you can see I have to play around with it to make sure it fits. And then make sure here on the back side, this little red hole is aligned with the gap in the gray piece of the XRP robot structure. And then once that's aligned, you should just be able to push that down and snap it into place. As you can see in the video, just snap it into place like that. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You can see on the video, that's why you want to make sure the wiring is secure. So something like that doesn't happen. You can also tell I'm not very talented on the uh, electrical and mechanical ends, but either way, I want to do the same thing on the other side. This step is one of the more tricky ones, so take your time for sure and make sure you get it right. If you want to see the video again or anything, <laughs> yeah. And at the end, you can kind of just test it out, move it back and forth. So here are a couple notes. If you want to see the video again, just let me know. Yeah, the wires will be a bit loose as well right now. We'll make sure to get that sorted out in the next step. Um, so yeah, just give me a thumbs up or let me know whenever you guys are good. All right, player one, thank you. I love the, the synch synchronized thumbs up there from all three of you. We're good. All right, wonderful. So next we'll move on to the actual wiring. Um, I've heard plenty from our electrical team about how important this is. So yeah, I also learned how hard it is while building this out. Um, so yeah, the wiring will be a bit messy, but it's not too bad since we don't have too many wires to worry about here. I might be bit building bad habits that your electrical team will yell at you for later, but that's all good. We're worried about this right now. So with that being said, nothing new. We're just going to need our bot, XRP bot, um, we're going to need to pay attention to detail here because there are certain slots that the wires will need to go into. So, Noah, as yeah. a mentor, I just had a very strong reaction where I was like, I feel like I need to come in and say the cleaner your wires are, the easier it is to troubleshoot. Yeah, but, okay. Absolutely. No, I know, yeah, I know no. where you're coming from, though. No, you definitely want to build good wire habits, but as a soccer person, mind. I mean, that's why we that that's why we we have an electrical team. We'll go with that. But yeah, definitely <laughs> want to build good habits for sure with the wires the best you can. Excellent. So, yeah. All right, keep going. You're doing great. Yeah, thanks. So for these wires, um, if you look on the robot, they should be in motor L and motor R. Um, those are going to be right close to the black ports. Um, I'll give you a sec to locate those. Those are the nearest ones to the black ports. Motor L and motor R on their respective sides. Technically, you could put it into the other motors, but like the base code is built for L and R. 
And these extra ports are for if your team wants to do like an expansion project, make an extension and kind of really get more delve more into the world of building a robot, you can make expansions and then you can utilize these other ports that they also have on the robot, which is a really nice thing is they have extra ports that you can be creative with. So with that being said, we're going to next see how we get these um, wires in. So here specifically, when you're putting in the ports, you're going to want to make sure that blue lines up with G and D. So the blue wire that you have lines up with the G and D space on the um in the port. If you prefer, you can also say um that the that the red lines up with the MR plus on here. And as long as you get one of the ends um lined up good, then the rest should also end up lined up pretty well. So you want once again blue with G and D. I think is just the easiest to memorize blue with ground and then just put both of those in and then they should also be facing opposite directions um yeah then you can test it again and here you can see again here in the note here's the wire order um blue into g and d or if you prefer looking at the other side red goes into mr plus and right next to it white is mr minus and as long as you get the first one matched up, the rest should come with it. So blue into G and D is the key. Um, let me know when you guys are good with that. We're good. All right, great. And player one looks like you guys are good as well. Sounds good. All right, great. Next, we're going to continue moving on. Now we're going to be wiring the sensors. So for this, you're going to want to grab out your distance sensor and line following sensor, which is going to be the image on the left. And then the two long multi-colored wires um, are the, you're going to need those two wires as well that are kind of held together by the thing in the middle. And yeah. So I'll give you guys a few seconds to make sure you have all of those sensors. You might need to cut them out of the bags. So give you a sec to get those out. Um, I think at the start of the video, I'm cutting it out of the bag anyway. So it's going to play the video through to We're gonna make sure to get those wires out. So just get those sensors out. And now we connect the wires directly onto the um the sensor. And it should be labeled. And you should see the UCC couple data pins and then G and D once again. Ground. So the way wiring matters once again. So black will go into G and D is first. So Make sure black is going into GND. You can see, kind of just put it on there. Next, you're going to want red is going to go into UCC, but don't do it in that order. I realized I did it bad in the video. The order, just do black into GND, and then yellow goes into echo, or the thing that starts with echo, it's just right next to black. Blue goes into trig, or the thing right next to yellow, and then red will actually go into UCC. So I would recommend doing it in that order just so you can get it done in a more efficient way. As you can see on here, they're wired here. It goes like that. So make sure it's black, yellow, blue, red, with black starting at GND and red ending on UCC um, is going to be the wire order. And then I'll give you guys a cup to do that. And then after that, you're also going to want to do the same for the line following sensor. The video here you can see once again the ports here or the spikes are going to be right there and you're going to want to do the exact same order which i'll put right back up here black gnd yellow echo blue trig and red ucc so if you guys can get those in um if you want me to play part of the video again um or go over that then yeah but otherwise i'll just keep up the note that has a wire order for you
And once you guys are all good, just let me know. Um, player one, good, wonderful. We're good. All right, great. With that, we will go on to the next slide, which is going to be the sensor frame. So in order to actually put the sensors on the robot, first we, we're going to have to build out the frame. So you can see the pieces that are, are going to be needed here. Um, the frame once again, and then the right picture you can see, you need it kind of looks like a mini table, the white piece there, and then the other one has a little notch on it. Um, so you're going to take a sec to get those two pieces, and here's the video. So these two pieces, I'll give you guys a sec to find those super quick. Oops, sorry. Yep. All right. So assuming that we have those pieces now, we are going to see how to mount them. Once again, robot on its back, white wheels facing off. And for this first piece, you're going to want the larger white frame piece. And what you're going to want to do is center it as best as you can. It doesn't need to be perfect, but as centered as you can. And you're going to want the front put in the top and then just push down hard on the back and that should snap into place. So I'll give you guys a few seconds for that as well. Um, once again, push down here, you can kind of see I place the back, the front, the top in first here. You're going to see the crease is what you want. Cent you want to center that crease and then put the front on top and then push down really hard on the back to snap it into place. So we'll give you guys a bit, a few seconds to get that as well. This might be a little bit hard to snap, but yeah. Next is going to be the smaller um, white frame piece. This one, you're going to take the little notch that you see right here, and this is actually going to go right in between that gap. So you see we have that crease and we kind of have that gap between the white frame and the, the main part of the robot. And that's exactly where this little crease is going to go or this little notch rather. So we're going to put in the notch. And then just push down as soon as you get down the notch, you should just be able to push down on it and get that in. So. That is all good. So now we're all ready to mount the sensors. Just to let me know when you guys are good with that. Or if you need me to replay anything, of course, as well. Can you replay that? Yeah, absolutely. Did you want both parts? All right. No, just a second. The second. All right, sounds good. So here we'll start from here. So make sure you identify where the notch is right there. You're going to want to flip it around so the most part of the frame is facing out, but just the notch can go right into that little hole made um between the oh, I already have mine and I can't really show it, between the uh, gap there. And then you're going to want to push that in and then just push down and it should snap into place. Yeah, this one's a little bit hard because you need to get it exactly in there. You might need to push forward or backwards a little bit as well. Just kind of figure out where it's best to snap. And yeah. Noah, when we do this next year, we should make a note to send um, stickers and googly eyes. Yeah, that would be exciting. Next to kind time. Of Add some decorations, add some flair. Mm -hmm. Oh, now I'm mm -hmm. looking. I also remember they do have a really nice sticker sheet, but unfortunately it doesn't have any googly eyes on it, but they oh. do have one of the bots. Yeah, <laughs> next the, time. the uh, googly eyes. We can decorate a little bit. That'll be fun. I feel like the um, student board should have their own little like sticker, but like is something cool related to Wisconsin. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, Here, did you guys want me to replay the second video super quick? I think um, player yeah. one, I can't. The second part of it, yeah, this one's a bit tricky. So what you're going to want to do is. Let's get the front in. So you identify where the notch is. Um, do, do you guys see where that little piece kind of juts out, so to speak? Um, you want to grab that. 
and then in and then you're going to want to put that into the middle. Oops, oh, sorry, this Google's I'm trying to go back five seconds like I would on a YouTube video, but Google Slides just makes it go back a slide. I need to stop doing that. But here, yeah, you're going to take that notch, you're going to fit it in. And then you're going to want to push in like towards the robot almost. Um, Yeah, so the smaller frame goes in between the larger frame. And they're going to, want to push in towards the main robot towards yourself and down, assuming you have this in the same orientation that I have it in. And push in and then you can push down. And it should be good there. Player one, good to go. Wonderful. Thank you guys. No. You guys are good. All right, great. Next, we'll move on to step 11 then, which is going to be installing the first of the two sensors, which is the line following sensor. So you're going to want the wired sensor. It should be wired. So the picture I have it isn't wired, but we already wired that up. So that'll be good. And then we also want the frame in the same orientation. You're going to want to turn the frame around so it's facing towards you now, just because this will make it easier to put in the sensor, as you will see. So we're going to start with this one. So you're going to want the wires pointing out, not in. Make sure the wires are pointing out from the rest of the robot. That's going to be very important. And then this one, it took me a few minutes, like multiple tries in the video as well. Um, you only see the one that works, but you're going to want to put the line following sensor. You're going to want to push it against the back. And then you're really going to have to kind of move it, make it fit maybe bend the frame even to give it a bit more space and then push down on it really hard. This one's really tricky. Um, I'm going to push it back. Yeah, you can see I'm trying to push it in and down. It takes me a couple of tries here even. Lift the robot up to get some extra leverage. And then, and then you're going to have to push down quite hard to snap it into place. You're going to have to play around to make sure you can really get it in there. Yeah, so once again, make sure the wires are facing away from you or away from, sorry, away from the main part of the robot and then snap in the line following sensor. And once you guys are good, once again, just let me know. Player one there, I love the synchronize. Once again, thumbs up all at once. Love to see that. Build some. All right, wonderful. Build some early team spirit. All right. You guys are a lot better than me at that. Um, either way, next moving on is installed in the other sensor, distance sensor, range finder sensor, whatever you want to call this. So once again, the range finder sensor should be wired. Um, so grab that, the wired, and then the frame that we just installed the line following sensor on. Give you guys a sec to grab those out. And now Distance, so for this one, the last one, we want to make sure the wire was facing out from the main part of the robot. This one, make sure the wire is up, is facing like an upwards vertical direction. That's what we're going to want to make sure when we apply this sensor. Oh yeah, oh sorry, I didn't mention this. Flip the robot, make sure that now the white wheels are facing the other side. That's going to be really important. So make sure you flip it over. You don't see the line following the sensor anymore. It's on the opposite side. That's extremely important. So make sure to flip the robot over. Once again, so the white wheels are facing down. You don't see the line following the sensor. And then for this one, the wire is up and in, in pointing towards the sky. So with that being said, we're going to want to... I'll I put it in here first, but then I'll show you. If you see, there's like a kind of a double groove. There's a little groove that you can put it into here. I would put the top in first and then push the bottom in after. As you can see in the video, is that little groove right there that the sensor is going into. So put the top in first and then snap the bottom in. That, once you guys get that, all the sensors will be done and ready to go. Player one, thank you guys. Well, I'm going to synchronize this last time, but still good. All right, great. Wonderful. So then we'll move on to step 13. We're almost there. Just got a few more things to go. Now it's just wiring again because we love wiring. But of course, it's very important. So yeah, here's going to be the video. So take both wires. So th this one, the line sensor goes into, well, line. And then for this one, black will go into G and D. Here's the wire order. 
Black goes into G and D. Yellow goes into IO21. And then red goes into, I think it's U33. Let me check to make sure. Um, I didn't have it listed on there because it's the odd one out, but or 5V, five 5V. Five yeah, so black into G and D, red into 5V, and white into IO16. Or I might have been looking at the wrong thing. That's my, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. A black into G and D, it looks like red is into 3V3. Blue is IO20 in yellow, or blue is IO20, yellow is IO21. But really, if you get black into G and D, the others should fall into place. So make sure black goes into G and D, line goes into line, and range goes into, well, range. So once again, black into G and D is the key here for this wiring. Black into G and D. So let me know when you guys are good, and I'll just play this video out. Yep, so black into G and D for both of those. Line goes into line, range goes into range. Thank you, player one. There you go. I know one of you got to a little bit right there on the thumbs up, but you'll get there, get there. Um, yep. <clears throat> Then um, for the other Marshfield team, whenever you guys are good, let me know. Or if you want me to replay anything as well, of course, just let me know. No, when you were working on this, was there anything that you found um, that was like super challenging? You had mentioned some of the like setting of the you know, sensors and kind of like clicking the different pieces in. Was there anything where you were like, I wish this was a little bit easier or I would have 3D printed this differently? Yeah, for sure. I think a couple of the things I mentioned at the start, it's like, mm -hmm. it might be hard to see through the camera, but the Raspberry Pi is like not completely vertically straight. It's like a bit tilted, which when I was first building, I was wondering if I was doing something wrong, but eventually I think I just realized that's how it's supposed to be. And then the batteries are a bit loose, but it's not that bad. Um, Overall, yeah, I think it's designed really well though. Um, a couple of the things I know are like the line sensor, they didn't have, that might have just been me though. Some things were a lot harder to snap and then others, like the line sensor, that was a bit challenging. And I also find, I think, maybe it's just the way I've ordered the wires, but sometimes the wires like cross over each other. If I don't know if I can see in the camera, like crisscross. Mm -hmm. So if the, I guess if I reorganize them, maybe it's better, but where the range, like the wires just stay to their side where their ports are. I think it's the only other thing I would say, but overall, I think it's definitely designed very well. That's great to hear. Awesome news. We'll see. We'll see if uh, they're looking for feedback or if Chris Drake would be interested in knowing that. I think either way, it's a great resource. Um, I know that one of the big barriers for like new engineering mentors is they might be programmers in their day to day work, but that doesn't translate to programming an FRC robot and teaching students how to program FRC robots. And so being able to start with a tangible item that our rookie teams will be able to work with is really valuable. So I was excited about that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. I think just once again with the WPI and Lib, it's completely different than anything else, but it's basically all we, it is, I would say, all we use in FRC. So having this to start is definitely really the good um all right are we good to move on yeah all right wonderful so next we will be building out the arm which is the last part of this which is really exciting so first we're just going to install the frame um you're going to want the uh this little white kind of like saleable looking piece i guess i don't really know how to put it it's there in the on the right and then of course our frame still um, we're going to want our frame with the white wheels facing down and away from us. Give you guys a sec to get those. I think I just get the materials here. So we're going to want the mount. So for this, what I'm explaining in the video right now is um, the audio is a bit weird, but 
for the XRP, the way they have it is they want the arm to be centered. And well, this is the arm mount. And then you can see the servo kind of takes up a little bit of space. So because of that, you're going to want to position this mount just a tiny bit to the left of the center. Tiny bit to the left of the center. And then you can see the small circular part on the mount. Uh, I don't know if I'm holding it up right there. That small circular part, just kind of like the notch from the frame for the sensor, that's going to go right in between the two lines, just to the left um, on the bot. So you can see here, you're going to want to push that in, in between those two lines, and then just take this back down and snap the back in as well. And then next is the actual servo motor, but that will be the next step for this one. You're going to want to put that little notch in first and then snap the back on the lower part into place. So again, just a little bit to the left is what XRP recommends um, to do. There you go. There's the synchronized thumbs up. I was waiting for it. Good job. There you go, player one. Um, yeah, so I'm sneaking the notch just like the line sensor and then get the back in as well. And then I know for myself as well, while building this, it was also a really good experience since I never worked much with the mechanical or electrical aspect of it, even if it was like following a guide or just learning it as well. I think it's a really helpful experience to be able to experience what other people go through. And it can also help if I have like design ideas that I want to share with my team. Having built this, I think however small it is, it's definitely helpful. And more importantly, for most of the mentors in the electrical team, I realized how important the wires are for their order. <laughs> um, yes, I think it's definitely a very good experience. Um, yeah, just let me know whenever you guys are good for the other Marshfield team. Now, can you tell us more about the student board of directors, either now or after the next explanation when there's another break? Yeah, absolutely. I think probably there's, I know there's one part coming up that's a bit difficult. So right after that, I can talk about it for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Um, so yeah, whenever, or if you want me to play the video again as well for the other Marshfield team, just let me know.
realized I might have been muted while I was explaining that. Sorry, I meant to ask if the uh, other Marshfield team. Yeah, just play the video and I was muted. Um, did you guys want me to explain anything else or play it again? I did not realize I was muted. That's my bad. <laughs> it's all good. We're good. All right, wonderful. Thank you, guys. All right, yeah, sorry about that again. I'll just stay unmuted. My computer was... Actually, I don't think you can hear the fans, so we're all good. All right, sorry, enough about that. Um, Next, moving on to the next step. This is actually installing the servo to the robot. Um, Yeah, this one. So we're going to need the frame, the servo. We're not going to use the arm yet, just the servo, because we're also going to wire it into the same step. So this one should be a bit quicker. And then the next, the last step will take a little bit longer. But for this one, make sure you have your servo in the frame and we have it in the same orientation as before. So with the servo, you're going to want the little white part kind of that you see here. I don't know. I can show this in the camera kind of right here. You're going to want this to be facing towards the middle. Um, if you guys can see this in my actual camera, the little white part on the servo right here, you want that facing towards the middle and then and then you're just going to want to line it up with the um with the frame and snap that down. Be careful of your finger. I kind of got my finger a little jammed there, but it's all good. Um, so yeah, so once again, make sure this white part of the servo is facing towards the middle of the robot. And then you're going to align it and then push it in kind of with this black part just up against the end of the frame. So you're going to want kind of these the two sides that extend out of the servo just to the right just towards the middle of the robot so make sure you guys can get that in and then um I'll give you guys a sec for that and then we'll go into the wiring so you see this is towards the middle so i know this step might take a sec so i suppose i can explain about the student board right now as well um I think right now we're at 16 members across FTC and FRC all across the state, and it's from a whole variety of teams. We have a pretty large, con a decent concentration in and around the Milwaukee area, but it's really all around the state um, that's well represented. And the goal is really to spread first so that everybody can get the opportunity to get involved within the STEM community, to get involved within the first com community, because we really think that's really important. So. One of our important projects is not only spreading first throughout the community, but also sustaining it to ensure that newer teams are able to sustain, to be able to have the mentors and have the funding, be able to keep their teams going in the long run. And we also try to promote first through things like the State Advocacy Day, where we will advocate with lawmakers for um, to increase their funding for state programs. Speaking of which, you can still sign up for that, which is on February in February, but that's just a quick plug. The State Advocacy Day, you get to talk with your legislators. It's really exciting. Um, that's my quick rundown. Did I miss anything important? I'm not sure. Uh, no, I think you did. You did great. Um, if there are students who are interested, um, how do they sign up or get involved in the future? Yeah, for sure. So I think in the future, if you're interested in joining the board, we do have quite a few seniors. So even next year, there would be openings. Um, I think a form would be posted on social media at some point for people that would like to apply and fill out the form. And then there will be interviews as well to kind of make sure or to see who can get on the board and really help. That shares the same vision of us of spreading first throughout the community. So just to reiterate, because that was messy, um, social media posts, fill out form, interview process. Thanks, Noah. Good work. Great. Next, we'll move on to the wiring of this. So, yeah, make sure the wire is aligned with the servo one side, preferably. So, all right, that's as long as we have the white part facing within the middle, it will be aligned with servo one. So, servo one should be on the left. So, we're going to want to put the wires into servo one once we identify that. And Black, once again, goes into GND. That's becoming a pretty common theme. See, black is into GND here. Red into 5V and white into aisle 16. Not sure if you can see that. That should be in the camera. But key thing, once again, is black into GND, which is becoming a common theme. Um, had that a few times now. And then everything else should kind of follow it into place. But yeah, black GND, white aisle 16, red 5 volts. Then just snap that in. 
or just push it in. And then let me know when that is good to go. We're good. All right, wonderful. Player one, thank you as well. And one other thing you might realize is there is a second port, there's a servo two, and that's just once again, it was nice for XRP. If you have any expansion projects that you want to do, you could connect another servo there, which is really nice. With that being said, we will move on to the final step of this building phase, which is exciting, which is step um, 16, installing the arm. So for this, you're going to want um, your frame, of course, the actual arm, which is in the middle, and then a servo utility. So within your little, you should have a servo utility bag that has let me see, I actually have one right here. Let me grab it super quick. It's got a couple of things in it, and it's got like a couple of screws and a couple of these white connector pieces almost, it looks like. So if you can grab that out, this specific piece that you're going to want from it is in the far right. It's a little bit blurry there, but it's basically, it's like, it only has a circle on one end, essentially. It's a thinner piece. So you're going to want that from the servo utilities bag along with the arm and, of course, your frame. All right, so I'll give you guys a sec to grab that. And I'll show you guys here in the video here as well, a clearer picture of what the actual servo we're looking for, or servo utility rather, that we want looks like. Yep, so it's gonna, you're gonna want. Yep, so you're gonna want this one. It has one end that has the little hole. Um, let me see. All right, well, I can't really pause at a good point, so I guess right here, um, that's the piece you want. So now this next part is pretty tricky as well. You're going to want to, you can see on this, um, on the arm, go to the side that extent protrudes out a bit and has a hole. If you flip it onto its side vertically, you're going to notice that there's also a hole right there, and that's the quote-unquote secret chamber, so to speak, that we're going to ut be utilizing. So which that's when like the whole, you might think that's a bit long for the arm. Well, that's why the secret chamber is there. That's where this piece is going to go into. So you're going to want to push that in there and just push down really hard, like push, really try to push down really hard to get it into that opening through the um, arm. And then it should snap into place on its own right after that. So that's, let me know when you guys are done with that because I know that stuff sometimes takes a bit. Um, awesome. Remember, just get it in there and push it down. And Noah, I had originally um, scheduled this to go until eight. Um, I have a hard stop due to a small child's bedtime. Do we want to share the PowerPoint information about how to connect to the WP? Um, lib library information, et cetera, and then follow up with everyone in January, maybe with the other teams as well, um, to go through and see if they had any questions, to kind of walk them through the programming pieces and just see if there's any final, um, you know, things that kind of came up as they were working with the robot. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that'll be a good idea. Um, I can... So the arm isn't really that like it's important, but we don't need it to connect. So I think right now, if I go straight to the WPI stuff, we might still be fit it in super quick. And once again, I can put the link to the slideshow again in the chat. It's right there. Um, if any of you guys want to follow along, tinyurl.com slash XRP dash demo dash WI. So with that, don't worry about the arm. Um, once you put it in, it's really easy to just click on the slideshows here as well. There should be sound when you actually play it on your end, hopefully. So with that, grab out your computers and you're going to need the micro USB cable because we are going to move on to programming the bot or connecting it to WPI. Lib. It's not really programming it, but connecting it. So yeah, we can worry about the rest of the arm later. It's not really a huge deal. We want to make sure because this process takes a bit sometimes. So connecting to WPI Lib. I'm going to drop all of these things into the chat as well individually um, because we're going to need these. I'm also going to share my whole screen, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. So I, this one I can, I feel pretty confident doing live. Um, so let me stop sharing and 
reshare my whole screen. Um, can you guys see this? All right, sounds good. So what we're going to want to do is let me drop this link into the chat super quick. I don't know what's happening with these bullet points. So we're going to hop into here, this link. And if we're looking at my screen share, you're going to want to scroll down and download this XRP WPI lib firmware 1.0.0 UF2 file. So we're going to want to make sure to download that file. It should be relatively quickly. Um, the link is in the slideshow and in the chat. And I'm going to go through this kind of quickly um, just because there is a recording. So you guys can follow along with that after if need be. So after you've downloaded this firmware, now what we're going to do is grab our XRP bot and our micro USB cable. And now we are going to connect it. Um, you can see in the slideshow here, I've circled the micro USB cable, place the boot cell in the reset button, which we're going to need. But we're going to plug in the micro USB cable into our robot. Make sure to turn it on. Actually, you don't need to turn it on. And then, so plug in the micro USB cable into that port, and then plug it into your computer. And it should click in. And so now that that's all in, locate the boot cell button, which I once again is highlighted here in the slideshow, and the reset button because those are going to be important here. So what you're going to want to do is plug in the micro USB, hold down the boot cell button. I'm going to try to show it in the camera, but while you're holding it down here, you're going to want to click the reset button and then release it, release both. And as you see on my screen, now in your file explorer, you should have an RPI-RP2 right here. So once you have that, I would open up another file explorer and then into downloads here. Now what you're going to want to do is drag this firmware, the firmware that you just downloaded, the UF2, onto the RPI RP2. So you're going to let that download and copy it in. And the, now to disconnect from your robot, that's completely fine. That's normal. And give it a few seconds. You can see the green light on mine. Oh, it stopped flashing. But that's just when it's reloading. And now after it does, oh, OK, well, now it's back as a Pico disk, which is good. Now once it's done with this, um, here's a video on this. Once you actually on the slideshow, the video is formatted fine. Um, so if you want to watch the video, of, that's just the actual how I hold it down. But after that, disconnect. And then when you go into your Wi-Fi network, in your Wi-Fi, you should see a XRP dash some four digit dash some four digit combination. And this means everything worked, everything is good. Now you can unplug your micro USB cable, which is what I'm going to do right now micro USB cable. I will not yet connect to this because that would mean I disconnect from the call. That's why I join on my phone, but I'll use that in a sec. First, I just want to show you guys how the rest of this works. Um, so yeah, that's you're going to connect to the Wi-Fi. We'll do that in a bit. Don't do that yet. Um, so next, we're going to need to download the 2024 WPI and live beta version. 2023 won't work since the XRP thing has just been installed in 2024. It's very recent. Um, so here's a thing. I can drop this into the chat. Once again, it's on the slideshow as well. Um, so here you're going to want to go to downloads and then go to WPI. And I have a Windows, whatever you end up having, you can download it. Um, and then I'll go over the process of how to install WPI, but I've already installed 2024, the beta version. So I'm going to show how to get the XRP running first. So next, what you're going to do is you're going to go up into this upper right corner here and click this W button, kind of the WPI and Lib logo. And then you're going to want to click create a new project. So once you're here, you click select a project type. We're going to go to template Java and then XRP educational robot. It's going to be the last one. You can also search XRP. It's going to be educational robot is what we're going to use. These are just templates that kind of give you an example of code. So if you want to use command style, time style, you can look at those as well. But I would recommend looking at educational robot first. Next, you should create a folder at some point of where you want to put this. So if I go to Visual Studio Code, let's say that's one of my folders. Um, 
Let me just find it. Um, well, it doesn't really matter. I can put it in any folder like. Here, Visual Studio is where I put it and let's say FRC 2023. I'll put this here and then project name. We'll just say demonstration. Make sure to check the create a new folder project or box. Make sure to check that box here. You can put in your team number and do not click enable desktop support. It's fine, but it kind of messes with some things that can get a bit jank at times. Just put in your team number and then you can click generate project. And we'll just say current window. Uh, yes, I trust the authors. And now this will generate all of your, like some of the code you can see for the educational robot. It has the drivetrain in here um, and everything, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so this is kind of just the base to kind of show you what everything's about. It's still loading everything in, so we'll give it a sec. You should have a couple more files. You can see it's still loading down here, so I jumped the gun a bit. We'll let it finish loading. Now, hopefully, um, oh yeah, I thought there were a few more files. Um, that's fine, but yeah, you can see it's got robot Java. This is just the base. Um, but now it has the XRP drive. Can you wait These are please. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is all going to be recorded as well. I'm going through it a bit fast just so I can get through everything. Um, there's going to be a recording sent out with we'll everything as well. Later. Okay. okay. So and and I also um I think it'll be smart for us to follow up and do one more session uh, with the yeah, rookies, absolutely. even potentially um, after kickoff, just to see if you have any additional questions. Maybe other members of the student board could join um, as well. But I know I know we were definitely going a little bit fast here. And um, in terms of the training, we'll be able to make sure that we have uh, appropriate time in the future. So it's good to, it's good to know that, you know, the, uh, the build process, we had like exactly the right amount of time for that. But then in terms of downloading um, the library pieces, you know, we we started running out of time in the hour and a half that we scheduled. So we'll just make a note that we need closer to two hours um, and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of just super quick going back to WPI and Lib. Once you download this, it's an ISO file. So you're going to need to go to show more options. 7 zip, you're going to click extract to whatever this folder is, WPI and Lib 2021. So we're going to let it do that. And then once we get here, you open WPI and Lib installer. I've already installed it, but then you just follow the prompts and you can install it that way. So yeah, once that, you can install it that way. Um, so super quick here, this, I'm pretty sure this is what it's supposed to be like if all the files load. There's a drive distance. It has all the subsystems, robot, robot container constants. It has all of that connected. Um, so I'm going to take the last couple minutes to run through a couple of these slides at the end, and then I'll try and show the robot with a minute or two at the end if I connect to my phone. But so the next steps is that I think you guys, your team should work on options. You can practice commands where you would have the subsystem built out, like you have the subsystem, you have these files, but then maybe you don't have these commands built out yet. You can kind of see, read the comments, see how that all works. You can try to write from scratch. You can use this as a reference then when you write from scratch. Or you can add from this space where you have all this code that works already, and then you kind of add on to it. Um, and then for future presentations, if you guys would be interested, there's just this slide explanation. I could explain all the space code. I could introduce network tables using sensors, any other requests that you guys might have. But super quick, there's one more really important thing that I want to go over, which is how to actually run the robot. So what you're going to want to do is click this, the WPI lib symbol, and then simulate robot code. And then it will simulate robot code. We'll give it a sec. It will open this up. And then here, you're going to want to open system joysticks right here. You drag keyboard zero onto joystick zero. I've already done that here. And then you're going to want to right click on keyboard zero. Go to the keyboard zero settings. Now you can change your keys. Like if I don't want to be WASD, I want it to be like F or something. You can change these keys to be whatever you want. 
And now you can see the axis is changing. If I connect it to the robot, then all of this is going to be changing. So yeah, that's how that would work. That's how you would run the robot. Um, you would go to the settings. You can see these are going to be your button one, button two, button three, button four, all your POVs that you code for inside your code. You can then test it in here. Um, yeah, with that being said, the only other thing I should mention, I think when you connect to this Wi-Fi network originally, it's going to ask for you for a password. The password is um, xrp-wpilib right here. That's in the slideshow. Um, and then if you go to this link as well, you can change the password, change the name of the network. There's some problems with changing the password right now, so I wouldn't recommend doing that, but you can change the network. But yeah, once you would connect to the robot through the Wi-Fi, that's when you would simulate the robot and that's when you can run through everything. And yeah, sorry, I know that was super duper fast at the end, but once again, this is all recorded, so hopefully you can slow it down then and kind of get it there. And here are my options, future presentations as well. These are my ideas. Um, yeah. If you guys have any, let me know for sure. I'd definitely be willing to do it in the future. Otherwise, just thank you everyone for coming. I know I learned a lot putting this together. Um, build season's coming up, coming up. Best of luck to you guys on all of your seasons. I hope to, to meet you guys at some of the competitions as well. I think that'd be really exciting. Um, yeah, just let me know with email, any other things that you would like to know. Even if it's not, a, I think we want at least one more full webinar, but even if it's not that, just any questions you have, feel free to reach out to me. My email was noah at firstinspireswi.org. Um, it should be in the email chain as well. But yeah, thank you guys once again very much for attending. Um, if you have anything else to end it off. So I'm going to, at this point, I'm going to stop the recording um, so we can talk about our plans to connect after kickoff. Um, and then just remind everyone not to uh, panic or worry about um, not catching all of those final glorious pieces associated with the coding aspect um, because we'll be sharing the PowerPoint slides, we'll be sharing this video, and we'll have a follow-up call to make sure that everyone feels really secure and comfortable with those pieces. So let me turn off the recording and we can go from there. Okay.